kind of a odd little archway of sunlight, ain't it? Just the way the clouds are, but it, it looks kind of strange. Kind of dreary today. Over here, it's snowing. It's not all that warm. A couple of days ago, man, we got spoiled. It was, according to our thermometer, it was 79, which I don't think it was. <laughs> it was warm, but I don't think 79. Yeah, 80 degrees is pretty toasty, and I don't think we had that. But today, I ended up uh, turning the power on down here at the fairgrounds, and I've just been kind of puttering. Cindy's down uh, putting stuff in her, in the restrooms down there, which she needs. And, you know, those restrooms, we never, they're brand new. And they never opened them up until uh, the fair time last year. And so they're not set up. There's no shelves or anything in there. I need to build some shelves in the supply rooms and all sorts of fun and exciting things like that that you don't want to see anyhow. <laughs> kind of what I'm doing in here. I'm still organizing stuff and puttering around. But, uh, boy, I've been seeing a lot about honeybees lately. You know, maybe, maybe it's been there in the past, but I don't think so. And they're saying that, uh, this year is one of the biggest die-offs in history. In fact, let me see if I can find that here. It's on my phone. You know, our honeybees, the, uh, set this down here. Uh, we lost them again this, this winter. They were doing so good, and I don't know. I don't know what's happened to them. You know, about the time we decided to get into this, I started hearing about all these bees all over the world dying off, and <laughs> it figures. We got bad timing generally, but I didn't really expect to have this kind of problem. Okay, millions of bees have died this, this year. It's the worst bee loss in recorded history. Um... The U.S. beekeeping industry is in crisis over the shocking and unexplained deaths of hundreds of millions of bees over the last eight months, which would have been about the time we lost ours. It's an unfolding disaster for the industry. Blake Shook, one of America's top beekeepers, has found tens of thousands of dead insects at his business, and he said it's never seen losses like that before. The data is showing us that this is the worst bee loss in recorded history. Experts investigate cause of the massive honeybee colony die-offs. The colony die-offs became apparent as U.S. commercial beekeepers geared up to transport colonies to California, where approximately 70% of the nation's honey managed honeybees are trucked and pollinated to pollinate almonds every year. Uh, Average recent losses have been upwards of 60% of honeybee colonies, leading to combined financial losses of at least $139 million, according to ongoing survey of 234 beekeepers from across the country. The survey is being conducted by Project Alpis M, the American Beekeeping Federation, the American Honey Producers Association, and Extended Programs and Beekeepers. Based on early numbers that are coming in, it's suggested that this will be the biggest loss of honeybee colonies in U.S. history, said Scott McArt, Associate Professor of Entomology and Program Director for the Dice Lab for Honeybee Studies at Cornell. The Bee Researcher Bee Research Laboratory at the U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, research service in Beltsville, Maryland, has uh, collected samples of honeybees, wax, pollen, and honey from dead and dying hives. The government's facility is now testing samples for parasites such as varroa mites and viruses. 
but due to government staffing cuts and the high expense involved with testing samples for pesticides, uh, the USDA staff and commercial beekeepers approached McCart to see if Cornell could handle pesticide analysis. The USDA lab has had cuts, so they simply can't do a quick turnaround for these pesticide results. At the same time, it is very expensive for them. Um, McGart and colleagues are using mass (laughs) spectrometry techniques to analyze 500 samples and identify chemical residues. The Cornell lab can process up to 50 samples a week for sample costs about $120 to test. An anonymous private donor came forward to fund the project. Findings from the USDA samples won't be available for at least another month. Two years ago, Florida beekeepers experienced similar losses of up to 90% of their colonies and $4.28 million in revenue, through the damage was, though the damage was limited to a very large commercial honey bee operation in Florida. At the time, the USDA bee lab had the capacity to run the samples and their results will soon be published. Early indications are that, boy, I don't know what that word is, neo, <laughs> neonicotinoid pesticides possibly used to control Asian citrus something pests on oranges were to blame. Huh. And uh, there's a whole bunch more, too, I was, I've been finding here lately. One of them says that they think that getting rid of the drones is a mistake. But you don't really want too many of them. Most beekeepers do take out a few of them um, and thin them out because they're uh, they're <laughs> what they call worthless eaters, really. You know, they don't really need to be in there. They're, they don't produce honey and they don't really have any... Uh, any purpose other than to breed the queen and by the fall they're done with that anyhow so the bees themselves will even kick out the drones sounds like somebody's coming here just Cindy driving by but the you know we haven't had very good luck the first couple of years we did this we've been doing having bees I bet 10 years, maybe a little bit more. And um, the first three or four years, we did pretty good. We we went from one hive up to five hives. And we were actually getting a little bit of honey. And uh, one by one, we just kept losing them. This last year, you know, we took a break for them, from them for a year. And we bought some more. And this last year, these bees... There's no reason they should have died that we could that we can find the uh, the boxes are full of honey. They had plenty of brood and larvae. They were doing good, you know, and they didn't swarm. The queen was in there last time I checked it when I buttoned it up for the winter, and uh, somebody said they thought I had a mouse in there, but I had mouse guards in there, and I never saw any sign of it. Even after we found them dead, there was no you know, mouse turds or anything in there. Uh, they, a uh, mouse shouldn't have been able to get in. So I don't know what happened, but when I went to check them, there was no noise. And usually you can hear them buzzing a little bit, even in, you know, in the winter and you open them up, they're, they're moving around in there and nothing, nothing at all, all a bunch of dead bees. So, kind of sad. And it's expensive. The, uh, to buy a, what they call a nuke, which is a, I think short for nucleus or something, uh, bee starters basically. You got a queen and you got usually a, a frame or two of um, larva and then a bunch of worker bees and things that all come together and you end up, I don't know, four or five maybe frames and stuff. and. Anyway, uh, to start, it's a bee start kit, basically. That's about 160 bucks. <laughs> and so we got one of those. 
they made it through the summer doing great. And then nothing. And then they're all dead. I was talking to Dan, the guy that he sold out now, but he has had Salmon Valley honey for uh, years and years. He's made enti his entire living off of bees for as long as we've known him, and that's been probably 30 years, probably longer than that. And uh, he's good at it. He had a thousand hives. He sold all but a hundred of them. Uh, decided he was going to retire with a hundred hives. That's still a lot of work. But anyhow, he told me that he lost about 60%. The guy that bought his bees lost about 40%. Not looking good, and none of them should have died. I mean, there are fewer normal, you know, but he said he's never had that problem before. So, it kind of makes me feel a little bit better about uh, losing ours, but I don't feel good about it. You know, you hate to see anybody having troubles, and I don't want to have troubles either. The, it's not cheap, and it's kind of a fun thing to be doing, too. Now, anyway, the uh, rest of the day today, I'm not sure just exactly what it is I'm going to end up doing. Uh, got lots to do, but none of it's very interesting. And just getting things going for the fair. Fairgrounds, not the fair. Fair's not till August, but anyway, see you folks tomorrow, and. Thanks for watching. Bye.